Greetings and welcome to this course video update. We recently had a new student come aboard with a whole bunch of questions and I thought these are really good questions that might make sense if I answer them in a video where everybody gets to also learn from this. Now some of these questions are going to turn into new pieces of content and some of them are already actually in the course but it's good to hear them recapped also from a different angle from a different perspective and also it crosses the lines so sometimes you learn about shots in module one and you learn about uh, something like the one two four method five lessons later but what if you have a question where these two uh, need to be cross-checked in relation to each other so that's exactly what this is about there's there's 10 questions here and i'm just going to go i'll read them out and, and give you my answer and hopefully this will help yeah, I'll teach you something, you'll learn something from this. So from the top, the first question was, how do you get a subject or a thought for your video? In other words, how are you inspired by a theme that you want to shoot? So for me, the first thing you have to ask there is, what are you shooting in the first place and why are you making a video? It always comes down to your why. There must be a reason you've decided you want to make a video. And with that means that there's a story that you feel the need to tell somebody. Now, when it's in, for example, a travel video, it's usually that there is some kind of experience out there that you want to now share with other people, with friends, family, or with strangers. And that that's the part that you have to pinpoint. What is it that you want to share? Is it that you want to share hey, look at me, I did this, I wish you were here, or I think you should try this, or this was my family's first time in this location. So you really got to take the time to pinpoint what, what the reason is, your personal reason for wanting to make that video in the first place. And once you got an idea of what that is, then the inspiration comes from your own interests pretty much. So if you take me, for example, it doesn't matter where I go in the world, whether it's locally in South Africa traveling or if I'm going overseas, my interests stay the same. That's the one thing that doesn't change what I like, the food I like, the activities I like. So those will automatically become the themes that I'm attracted to. And those are going to be the videos and the stories that I want to tell. So wherever it is, I might want to go and look for, for argument's sake, the best burger in town or the best surfing spot or the best hiking route of a place. So that's where the theme comes from because those are things that I'm interested in doing in any way. Uh, all I need to do now is go and tell that story in a new location, in a new environment, and that's what makes it interesting. That would, that's what gives me the ability to keep making more because every time I go and experience something, it's ultimately a different video. So long story short, to answer how do you come up with a theme or, or idea or a thought, look at, look at your own desire. What is, it that, what is the story you want to tell? And let yourself be inspired by your own interests. Second question was, how do you plan your shots in terms of visual presentation other than the one, two, four method? Okay, well, the interesting thing is that one, two, four method is not so much a plan, but rather exactly that, just a method. It's something that is automatic. It's something that you want to get imprinted in yourself so that you keep doing that automatically when you arrive at a new location or a new scene and you want to get those shots quickly. So I arrive at the beach and I go, Ah, oh, let me get the wide, let me get these two mediums, let me get those four close-ups. Okay, phew, I've got the bare minimum of what I need to show the location and the story. So it's not so much the, uh, the full plan, it's just a method of, of getting those shots quickly and knowing that you've got sufficient to start telling that story of where we are, what's happening and what are the details. But then to take it a bit deeper, it's almost the same answer as the first question. What are we shooting and why are we shooting it? And when you know that, when you're able to pinpoint to say, I'm going to shoot this beach because it's the first time I'm here in my life. 
I'm going to shoot this beach because I've always wanted to come here since I was a child. I'm shooting this beach because I have my children, my wife and children here, and I've always wanted to show it to them, or I'm taking a friend, or, it, you know, it, this is where it becomes unique. It becomes your story. So I'm shooting this deep beach because, and then you can start to plan your shoot around that. So if it is to show somebody the beach for the first time, well, then your medium shots are going to be around that. The action is you and me and going, look over there of us together and then a reverse shot of them looking around. So when the viewer looks, they go, oh, the action is that they're being shown around. Then all you need is that talking shot to say, I'm here with my friend and I'm showing them the speech for the first time. So the story starts to take shape around, um, yeah, the shots start to take shape around the story you want to tell. So how do you plan your shots? You always think about your story first. What is, what is the message that I want to give? And then you plan a one, two, four method um, multiple times, not just one, multiple times around that. So a one, two, four about my friend seeing the beach, a one, two, four about the beach, a one, two, four of my history here, whatever it is, you could just, you can list them up. Um, so that's the difference between planning the whole shoot and using the one, two, four method in, in small chunks in isolation. Question three is how do you decide background music for your videos and where can you get royalty free music from? Music choice is a tricky one. It, it's not straightforward because music can make or break your video. So yes, it does take a bit of time scrolling through media libraries and playlists to find the, video, the, the music that you want that best suits the mood and the feel of, of the song, you've, of the video you want to make. Uh, nowadays, I, I would suggest if you're going to be making videos regularly, you might want to make use of a sound library like Artless or Epidemic Sound. I've used both of these. Uh, there is some fantastic music in there, a wide ver variety of it. And the cost of it is not too bad. If for a YouTube subscription, um, for a creator subscription, it's about $15 a month. So if you're making regular videos, that's fine. Um, but even we have stayed around that sometimes. So currently, I'm actually not on a plan. We, we've, we've gone off of it. And I'm using completely free music again. I might change that and, and, and fire up my subscription when I feel that I've run out or I've depleted the good stuff. But right now I am using a channel on YouTube, which is free music or yeah, I'll, I'll put a link at the bottom of this video where you can check it out and you can download music from there. It's completely copyright free. And there is some good stuff in there. The problem is you, you have to kind of rely on their playlists. So if you're looking for cinematic music, you go to the cinematic playlist, but you still got to click through and listen to it and find the stuff that you want. So the best advice I can give you is spend one afternoon doing this and downloading all the tracks you like and put them in a folder somewhere, have 10, 15 tracks ready to go. So you don't have to think about it for a while. I've done that. And I've done that with free, free music. So I know I don't have to worry about this for another 10 videos or so, more or less. And yeah, so that link will be in the description below. I have recently added a lesson to the course where it describes how to go to this, that channel that I'm talking about and download it and get that music to your phone. In this case, it was to an iPhone and so that you can use it in splice or in iMovie or something like that. Um, so it's, it's definitely possible with, I've, with um, smartphone editing as well to use these YouTube free YouTube channels. All right, so the next one. What is your advice on duration of a video for beginners? All right, that is going to depend on what type of video you're making and where that video is for. For beginners is the key point to this question or the one that I'm going to, it's the point that I'll focus on is that if you are making videos for Instagram, it's always going to be around a minute and it's going to be uh, something that is 
a, a sort of a talking clip, the B-roll, a talking clip, the B-roll uh, segments. So very much in the course, the shot list that I described, the 10 shot, um, uh, the 10 shot sequence, that's what you want to try as a beginner, no matter what platform you're on. Even though that's ideal for Instagram, you can use that same method for a YouTube video or a Facebook video. Uh, the, so basically try and make short little one minute videos. Inevitably, I promise you, your videos are going to end up two to three minutes, if not five minutes, which is fine in the beginning. Just it's more important that you do it and see what happens. And then you can share that video with me, for example, and say, what do you think? And I might say, shorten it. It's too long. It's too boring, which is usually how it goes. Um, or you can afford to elongate that. So make a video. That's my advice. Make the video. See what comes of it. If you're anywhere between the two and the five minute mark, you're, you're perfect. Um, to get up to those 10 minute videos, to stay engaging for 10 minutes takes a bit of practice and a bit of skill and you've got to know how to keep keep that uh, engagement up the whole time to get somebody through a full 10 minutes but it's doable definitely if you just start making it and aim for a minimum of a one minute video in the beginning which is the template that we gave you in the course Number five, how to develop short storytelling skills okay well this goes straight into that how to develop the storytelling skills? Well, this is something you have to practice. <laughs> so you basically need to talk to a camera um, and it's gonna be terrible in the beginning, but you will get better and you'll get better quickly the more you do it, obviously. The thing to remember here is always try and say as little as possible. And that means what is the purpose of the story again? And just define that in one or two sentences and, and keep it like that. So what you want to say, for example, is let's use that beach example again. So, hi guys, I'm on Clifton Beach, which is a beautiful beach down in, camps, uh, in Cape Town. And I'm here with my friend who's here for the first time and I want to show them around. That's it. That's all you need to say. Say that short little piece. And then you can cut away, cut over to your, your B-roll, all the, the shots that you get. And then you can come back to yourself and say, okay, well, the next part of the story is I want to tell you about my history of this place. And again, it's going to be short. So you'll be, well, I've been coming here as long as I can remember since I was a teenager. Uh, it's literally got to be one of the most beautiful beaches in Cape Town and yeah, it's just absolutely awesome. I hope you can make it here one day. Something, something like that. You keep it short and then you can cut away again. And you just keep giving little bite-sized pieces. You don't have to do a whole long talking head like this video where you just keep going and going and going. No, instead, keep it into bite-sized pieces. And the better you get at it, maybe you have the, the gift of the gab in that way already, then, then you can keep it longer. Um, some people on YouTube have long, long, long talking segments and then short B-roll segments. But in the beginning, just to get going, it's usually easier to do it the other way around is where you have short talking segments and slightly longer B-roll segments. All right. Uh, Let's see this one. How do you add interesting elements to a video for an audience not to get bored? Okay. So the, the number one thing for audience not to get bored is the rhythm of the edit. You need to keep your audience constantly engaged. You need to keep their brain busy, in other words. And this you can do just as I just previously described, that you get uh, a couple of shots like this and then you go to the talking and you go back to the shots and that keeps that rhythm going so that just as they think they know what's, what they're seeing, you change it. And then just as they get used to that change, you, you change again. So that it's this roller coaster of you, you go in, you show, and just before they get bored, you change again and change again. So this is why it's so important with something like the one, two, four method, because you, a wide shot, if you have three wide shots back to back, 
The audience is almost going to expect another wide shot and that's when they start to get bored. But if you give them that wide shot and then cut straight away to a medium, their brain's busy now. So they have to identify the location first. Now they have to identify the action. So you're keeping them active and then you cut to a close up and they go, oh, that's nice. And another close-up, and another close-up, and another close-up, and it goes, oh, these are all nice, but now I know you're going to give me another close-up. Back to a wide. Oh, it's the location from a different angle. Let me look at this. Oh, now the person's talking. So <laughs> it's that variety that you've got to keep going at. Um, and obviously the story's got to evolve too. So these scenes need to be diverse in themselves, and then scene to scene has also got to escalate. So we're you want to build that tension of we're going somewhere so a travel scene and then the arrival at the scene and then maybe something went wrong or you didn't expect it so basically keep it in again in short elements that are controllable for you as a sort of early first time video maker and and keep that idea that I want to keep changing something keep building keep the shot variety keep the story moving Camera moves for beginners to make video look more cinematic. Okay, this is something that we have just started adding to the course. Uh, you'll see on YouTube, there's some new content out as well. Cinematic video is a huge, huge term that people really want to get better at because obviously it, it, it's amazing when your videos look amazing. And when it comes to movement specifically, as a beginner, keep it short, keep it small, keep it very slow. So using slow-mo on your phone is a good way to trick the audience into keeping stabilization, um, but you don't have to use that. The point is though that you have to use slow movements. So moving forward, moving backwards, and then the side to side is another one. So that's something you can do with every shot you do. Say you're, um, you're looking at a scene or a, um, a viewpoint, then to get a little bit of perspective, put something in the foreground, like some flowers or a fence or something that's in the foreground, so you can see the movement as you come towards that. The background will stay pretty much the same, but the foreground will move, and that's what gives you that cinematic feel. So arrive there, look at it, push roll, and then just do your count of one, two, three, four. And then before you stop, just do it again backwards. One, two, three, four. I usually kill it then, and then I do another one, and I do a sideways. One, two, three, four, and then go sideways the other way. And then I look afterwards which one is the, the best um, of those that I want to use. So. Um, there will be more on this soon. Also, I can put links to the more information about cinematic videos. Use the CMCM rule. If you haven't heard of that, it'll be in a video. Uh, you won't ever forget that. CMCM. Do, 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 do. All right, voiceovers. Uh, not comfortable hearing my own voice, but I do want to give it a go. Okay, yes, this is, <laughs> this is a huge one. This goes for voiceovers as well as talking to camera. Most people don't want to do it in the beginning. It takes a bit of time to desensitize yourself to the sound of your own voice, the look of yourself. The good thing is we're living in times where this is happening to us naturally. Most of us send voice notes these days on, on messenger apps like WhatsApp um, and end up listening back to our own voice. So we're getting more and more used to seeing and hearing ourselves, but that doesn't mean we're entirely comfortable with it yet. Again, if this is something, if this is the method of conversation or um, delivering information in your videos you want to use, in other words, you being in the video, it is something you're just going to have to practice. It's something you're going to just have to do, put it out there and, and, and do it again and again because you, it, yeah, you'll desensitize yourself and you'll get used to it eventually. It completely goes away at some point. Um, and with that, your confidence will grow and your storytelling gets better. And yeah, so by all means, start with the voiceover and then build up to talking to camera. And it's something you can practice off camera as well. Um, definitely when you're driving, you know, talk to yourself, practice your intros to a video. 
but at the end of the day you have to actually publish it to get over that fear you actually have to put it out there into the world and say i'm i don't care anymore it's just it's got to go your first video won't be great i mine weren't great go go to cha our channel travel vids on youtube and go back right to the beginning i mean my my first videos were terrible in terms of the way i, I spoke to camera and that so practice 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 all right, uh, two more questions. One is your color grading technique. All right, so many of the videos you've seen on YouTube, in our case, were actually uh, edited with Final Cut Pro, not always on a smartphone. And that's because it's just easier. It's way easier to control color grades. We use something called a LUT, an L-U-T, which is basically a filter, like an Instagram filter. You drop it on the video and it looks amazing instantly. The, all the editing apps, the smartphone editing apps that I've worked on, they also have some kind of color grade system built into them, but I find often they are very over the top. And the, also, it's, I find it's very difficult to go into each clip and add the, add the color grade and the next clip and then go into the menu and into the menu and add the color grade. Whereas on a desktop editor, you can highlight everything and drop the filter on everything. So here's one quick tip on how you can do that on a smartphone. Finish your video without a color grade, export it, and then bring it back into a new project as one clip and then add one color grade to the entire clip. That way you don't have to uh, go into the individual clips and it's just one click away, you export it again and you're done. And nine times out of 10 with those color grades, as I said on a phone, they're over the top. You can just tone it down, put, pull it down to about 80%. But it definitely can still make the difference between a very washed out plain looking video and something that does feel more cinematic. However, on that topic of how to use Final Cut, I'll answer that in the next question. The uh, tenth and final question was, in the future, what can you expect in terms of learning uh, mobile filmmaking and other things uh, on TravelVid? So where's this course going basically? Now for a while we've been working behind the scenes to change the system, to put new content in and to keep developing the way the teaching is going to happen. So asking questions like this, having one-on-one -on -one calls with me is definitely part of the system. Any one of you is welcome to, to have a call like this and we can discuss it privately or I can make a video afterwards about your questions for everybody else. Um, but it doesn't have to be public. You can keep your conversation with me completely private if you want. And also what I really implore you to do is to start submitting your work for feedback. Um, not just uh, privately, but also in the, on the Facebook group that we have at the moment. And uh, we can also do it on, on a YouTube channel if you want to share that with me. The point is that getting feedback from your, to your videos is, is the quickest way you're going to learn to improve. So learning to make your first one, that's on you. But if you wanna get better from the first to the second, dramatically better, then submit your video and let us, let us look at it. Let us talk about what, what could be improved. And like I did for one of our students, Steve Bolnick, uh, he submitted his first video. I, I edited it for him, showed him what I did, sent it back to him. And since then he's on a go. He's got a channel now I think he's on his sixth video, he's making short documentaries using mostly a phone. Um, so I'm very impressed and thanks Steve for doing that. Um, and I'm glad, I'm glad the feedback helped. So yes, feedback and questions is a big chunk of where this course is going. And from the results of that, we will make new content where is necessary or make update videos like this when necessary. Uh, some of the other things that we are adding in now are the checklists. So we started off with the birthday campaign, meaning it's literally a shot list that we provide you, which is a generic shot list on how best to cover that situation. So certain things like birthdays are predictable. Um, we're gonna make a wedding one because that's an experience too. 
um, especially if it's a traveling traveling wedding. Uh, but uh, also uh, hiking video is pretty much the same. Arriving at uh, art gallery is the same. So we're going to make some checklists for each of these individual scenarios. So please also submit that. And then there's also another type of video which isn't as predictable. And we have had one request for that already, which is vlogging to talk a little bit more about vlogging and vlogging for YouTube, which basically means it's a little bit more of an elaborate storytelling. And um, yeah, so vlogging is hot, hot topic at the moment for me to get on and to get that to you. Um, let me just double check what else I've got. Uh, video types. So breaking down the difference between what's for YouTube, Instagram and Facebook. Uh, that, that's a, a chapter that needs addressing. Uh, and yeah, with that also, what about videos that don't go online, videos that you want to share on WhatsApp? So yeah. Um, then the last one, <laughs> the very important one, which goes, uh, refers back to the previous question. This is something we haven't brought up yet. And that is that editing on a smartphone is a beginner tool. And if you want to keep making videos, if you want to really get into this and start running a channel, getting regular videos onto your platforms, then I do suggest you start moving towards a desktop editor, something like Final Cut on a Mac. There's DaVinci Resolve for, which is free and available on both, both uh, PC and Mac. And that those are two platforms that we are going to start doing tutorials for and adding to this course. Because I think once you've reached this point of creating your first two, three videos, it's time to move to a desktop editor. And that's where you can take your videos to a whole nother level where your B-roll and your, your main track can start overlaying and, and other cool tricks, including the color correction and that type of thing. So that's the biggest, biggest thing that we're looking forward to is uh, moving you to something like DaVinci Resolve and uh, yeah, making sure that your videos are better and better and better. So that's my update. I hope those questions help, were helpful. And if you have any others of your own, yeah, fire them my way. Look forward to hearing from you. That's it for me. And I'll see you soon. Cheers.